Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer and Show Me How to Win Top 5. It is uh, Christmas season, and so we're going to be doing something special for you guys. A top 5 for... Best stocking stuffers, right? Best stocking stuffers. Yeah. And uh, I, I guess otherwise, games that are just small, they can fit in. Hopefully you guys chose games that people can currently buy, because those would make for some pretty terrible stocking stuffers if they can't purchase them. And affordable. Yes. Cheap's yes. good, too. Cheap's good. So things that can fit in a stocking are top five. And uh, we're going to start like we always do. And so we have somebody special here, somebody brand new, uh, somebody gorgeous looking who's going to be joining us. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself, good sir, and what you do. Uh, I'm John Beckler from Tabletop Takeovers. Um, I run a uh, community group in Orange County, and we run events uh, for casual board gamers. Awesome. So I... Uh, privilege to be a special guest today. Live stream too, right? And we live stream, yes. Uh, every About every other Tuesday, a Tabletop Tuesday. All right, well, we'll let them all shill at the end here. Let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start with number five. We're going to roll our die, and the person who gets the highest will choose the order for all of us. All right. Uh, I got the prettiest dice, a six. Oh, it's so nice. Okay. So. I'm going to go ahead and start off first, because mine's the, uh, of, of the five I have, this is the largest one, so it's going to qualify, but just barely. After that, we'll go ahead and have Jackie, and then we'll follow up with you, John. Sounds good. All right, so my number five is going to be Maiden's Quest by WizKids. Mm. Maiden's Quest is a two-player card game that you can play with more players if you buy more of the game. So it'd be good if you have multiple kids. You can go ahead and stick two in, in uh, stockings, and you can play up to four people. But it's a solitaire game, and you're going to be playing the game in your hand, the entire game. So when you have your cards in your hand, you're going to simply fan them out, utilize those cards, and then you're going to be fighting the monster that you see as you go through the cards. So once you see that monster, you fan your cards out, you go, okay, I need to have these specific symbols. And if your symbols match the amount of monster's uh, health points, you will then be able to attack the monster, defeating it, and then you'll get a bonus. You'll have to actually turn over your cards in a different way, a different rotation, and you'll mm -hmm. gain that bonus to increase your deck's power. After you get to the end of the deck, you are then going to... Uh, go to the next tower, which is basically shuffling back in, and continue through the game. And it's all played in one hand. If you want to play two players, though, have you played this one before yet? Uh, I have not played it, but I interviewed the designer. Yep. If, yeah. if you've played if you played the two-player variant of the game, two players play it once, and you can just play, I play, you play, no big deal, we go through it. And if I need help, I can have you stop. Like, I need help. Okay, stop. And then I can you I can choose how many cards that you have, as well as mine. So if I need, if I need three and I have two good ones, I can work with her. So you can play solitaire co-op. So it's literally a one-player game, but it can be jump. You can jump in and play with anybody. So we're gonna be doing a live stream with this. Actually, will be fun with um, with Derek Funkhauser soon. Oh, but cool. this is by Ken Shannon, Wiz Kids Maiden's Quest. An excellent choice for a stocking stuffer and a great solo game as well. Nothing, nothing, you guys. I like it. I think this is a game for uh, true gamers, though. I don't think it's a good game for a noob. Yeah. Yeah, definitely someone who's really into gaming and uh, into the fantasy thing and I love the message behind it. The, the, the girl takes her own butt out of the tower. She's gonna rescue herself. That's because right. Because no one's coming to rescue her so I, I love She's that. like kicking butt it's, it's with this goblin. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Ken's done a bunch of really good games. In fact, I have a couple of them that are actually on the shelf right now because they're a lot of fun and this one is no exception. Camelot, really Tournament of Camelot. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm second. You are second. That's it for me. Okay. What, do, what do you think? Do you think this is good? Yeah. I, I, I'm sure I'll be taking some games home after this. <laughs> good, good. So Please. Can, uh, put it in the stocking. Exactly. I'll put it in my stocking for myself to... Yes. I'm Go excited. ahead. All what right. do you got, Jackie? So my number five is Arboretum. I We actually uh, did a live, a live play, play on that. Um, and this is a... Re uh, I love the recent reprint by Renegade. It's a tableau building game, plays two to four, and I checked the price, is less than $20. So it's about this big, about the same size as uh, Maiden's Quest. And for a little game, it's very strategic, and it's easy to teach, and it scales really well. So Arboretum, right now, by Renegade. It's, it's great, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's and an pretty. excellent, excellent choice. Pretty. It's a beautiful game, and it's fun. And I won, which is good, too. Winning is good. Yeah, winning is good. Good choice. It is. Wrong. It is. That's why I, I, she showed me how <laughs> to win. Right in the middle. She, she showed me how to win, and then I beat her. <laughs> All right. What do you got? I got the game, but it's the reprint What's version. What's the game called? It's called the game, and this is uh, what this, game is it? The game. Why? Why I, is it called I, the game? Because it's the game. 
I am the game. No, this is the game. I lost. Um, I just lost the game. This is from Pandasaurus Games and IDW Games. Um, this is the reprint that was a, a Target exclusive. So the original mm -hmm. is from G the. It's from Germany and it had like skulls all over it. Yeah. So if if you're used to it, it was a very dark looking art box. Um, when I first played it, I was like, this game would be a little more presentable. Uh, presentable to like my wife and um, if it wasn't so dark. It wasn't so dark. So it's cool that the Target came out with its own. Yeah, it was red and black. Red, black, yeah. very dark. Um, so this game, um, you have. You put out four cards, and it's one to a hundred, and then hundred to one, or hundred to two, or ninety-nine to two, and then um, you play with two players, and you, it's a silent um, card strategy game where you're play, trying to um, eliminate all the cards in the deck to and put them all out, kind of like a solitaire type feel to it. Okay. So. Um, but you can play with more than two. Yes, you can. Yeah. It's just a little bit harder because you're all looking at each other. Yeah. You're not allowed to talk. Right. So. IDW and Pandasaurus. Both. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So. Stefan Benendorf. Ooh. If you can find. Another game similar to this, The Mine, that I recommend that. If you can find that, but we didn't put that on our list because nobody can find it, right? I now. don't. I, I I actually had to. I had to use. Uh, I use playing cards just to learn how to play the game. I know. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Why don't you show? The, why don't you sell the game? That way I can buy it. Okay. Next year. Next year. <laughs> Next Christmas it'll but, be a great stock. But, um, but The Mine is great. Yeah, I haven't played that one yet, but again, you can't find it. But this one. Perfect size for your stocking. I think yeah. it's fourteen ninety nine. Yeah. Super, and I haven't it's in played stock. it, so I don't know. So I can leave it here. It's for basically you. the mine, but you can talk. Oh. The game, the mine is the game where you cannot talk, and yeah. the game is the mine where you can talk. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, Number five. Talk, you, yep. Good choice. Number four. four. Oh, I rolled a six. I think no. Okay. Yes, I'm choosing. So What's the order? What's the order? What is my choice? I think I'm gonna go first. All right. Go so. Free. My number four is Happy Salmon, or what we have here, uh, Funky Chicken, and, <laughs> and Monster Match too. Yeah, they're like all they from the same. Came out with thing. a bunch of different, yeah, different theme. But basically, it's a party game. Uh, I think it's three to six players, but with you a can, seven player expanded. Yeah, you can expand it to like a whole bunch of people by North Star. So Happy Salmon is basically a five minute party game. It's really quick and uh, I think it's great. You, If you get that in your stocking, you can play right away. For and kids, it, yes. for the whole, it, it's a great for family the whole game. Family. But, but really kids dig this yeah. game. But it's like the, the salmon version is a, is a Actually fish my cousin stole my salmon game, I think. I think that's what it is, oh. my cousins use it. So that's why I got my funky chicken going yeah. on here. And it's around $15. Cheap. And you, get, and you get a little chicken for free. Yeah, that's a good. It fits right into a stocking. It, and you have to like get moving, actually. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's a little exercising. Yeah. <laughs> so after all that meat, that big meal, the next morning you play that game to burn it off a little bit. Great choice. <laughs> good choice. Yeah. I'm Second, no. third. Okay, best for last. Uh, I have an oldie but a goodie. Well, a little bit of oldie. Yeah. It's tiny. That better not be an oldie. It's tiny and epic, it so it's perfect for in, a stocking. In board game age, it's old. Yeah. It's been at least around two <laughs> we years. Got tiny epic galaxies from Gameland Games. Um, this one is what is how many players is this one? Two to five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Two to five. Um, you're building your own galaxy, so it's a, a resource management with um, has some um, unique dice in it too to to obtain those resources. But you send your ships out, and uh, you're obtaining galaxies. And if you Victory points is like 20. Yep. But, um, yeah. Uh, 20 or 21, I 20 think. 20 or 21. Yeah. I like this game. It's it's fun. It's compact. I usually take it on um, trips when we go to, like... So you prefer this other than the... Rather than the other epics? This is my favorite epic. Yeah. So, um, I mean, they're all kind of unique. Uh, I, I, I think I agree with you. I think this one is my This favorite. is the best. Um, and they... Um, yeah, this is my favorite. So, mm -hmm. so far, we'll, we'll see what have Tiny Epic Mech Springs, but this they is just my favorite. Get, Epicer and more epic and more epic as they go. This is a little in the epic echelon, like just medium epic, right? Now. Medium <laughs> epic. To all the, 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 it's the medium epic. tiny of the epic. But, so epic. you said we were doing a stocking stuff for ourselves. Like we gotta have a tiny, yeah. tiny epic. Yeah. It's and great. it says it. It's tiny and epic. So. All right, this one is an interesting one, but I think probably the best. It's technically one of the best stalker games in my opinion for a hmm. gamer. This is called Gameception. It's a game within a game, and this is a deluxe edition. It's by James Woodward, and uh, it is made by Triumvirate Games. I don't want to pronounce that wrong. 
in game section, you're going to get a bunch of cards and you get to deal them out to all the players. Those players are then going to use those cards throughout any game in which you're going to be playing that night. So I might have these three cards in my hand, and whenever something happens, when somebody does some of these things, I play this card down for a point and I draw another card. That's it. Oh. For instance, the move, the movie quoter. If someone else quotes a movie line or a TV line, you play this card, and then I draw a new one. Oh. And that's while we're playing some other game. So it's kind of like Eat Poop You Cat, which is another game you okay. would play uh, during another game. Uh, this one is Game Section. Okay. Uh, if someone else says they could have one, if something played out differently, you play this card, right? If someone else eats or drinks something that isn't theirs, if someone else drops a game piece on the floor, so you're able to gain. So how do you win? Whoever has the most points by the time the game is done. So everybody just had like. So if we're all cards. playing Tiny Epic Galaxies. Yeah. We'll play this as well. And so you draw. And we're just playing three. You have three cards. When you play one, you draw another card. Throughout mm -hmm. the entire time we play this. When this game's over, whoever has the most cards played face up in front of them is the uh. winner. So you can win one or two games. It's just a bonus little game. Yeah. Uh, I really, really, really like this game. I didn't know if I would like this game when I first, when I first uh, picked it up. I got it from uh, the designer at Gen Con. And I'm like, eh, it seems cool. But it's really funny when just these weird things that you realize that you're doing. Like when you quote a movie and you're like, oh, he just scored a point off me because I was quoting a movie. <laughs> like, or I, oh, I, I, had, I, I took a bite of one of my uh -huh. wife's like one of her candies or something and somebody plays a card and goes oh so you... it's basically meta it's just yeah a, yeah, it's the yeah. Meta. so uh game -ception. it's really really cool i was really impressed with this game and i do use it whenever i'm playing other larger games so definitely check it out it's a great stocking stuff for a pretty while you're gamers. waiting for your turn yeah that's another thing too at least yeah. you can do yeah, something else smart yeah all so right that would Show be number up. four let's go for number three yeah, uh, six, six, I, six. I've matched you, and then I matched Michael, I know, right? and then. <laughs> uh, you can go first. This one. Excellent. You want to put that over there for me? I will. <laughs> um, I new release, new Kickstarter release, Pitchstorm. So. Um, I've heard of this one before. Yeah, this is a this is a fun one. This, this is a game of amazing movie pitches that you're on the spot and you got a minute to pitch a plot, a character, and a plot. Um, Why us? Uh, so, oh, while you're improving that, there's a, uh, a selected judge, and they're going to give you a movie note, which is going to totally derail your movie, and you're still going to have to pitch. So, um, you know, like, you kind of get into, like, Cards Against Humanity. It's a very basic, like, party game, and then you, you're like, I want to improv more. This is where you're at. Like, yeah. so that's just kind of, like, the, the intro to the beast, and then this, this I love. This a step higher. Exactly. Like, I've played a lot of games that are, like, film games where you're like telling an actor this one does a couple things that are interesting for me but it wouldn't be in my top five just due to the fact that it's it's still not enough for me i guess it still hits that that judging category yeah I guess. so this is from skybound a lot of their games right now or their pre previous releases were mostly judging games oh, but of course, i yeah. do like the improv that they go with those judges they did the fight was it super, super fight, fight which is a cool red flags game. Yeah, Red Flags, the, the that, that was fun. That's so this fun. is their newest one that just came out from Kickstarter. So this is their uh, a party game of amazing movie ideas with Scratch Up. It's horrible. So. Uh, I, the best idea of this is definitely when people draw a card and make you change the way you're telling the story. Yeah. Super funny. Uh, yeah, Super here's funny. some of the notes. The notes are just, I mean, we can pull one, two yeah. out random. We got uh, a needy, steamy, steamy romance scene every 10 minutes. Keep it rated PG. So you're telling a movie about a cowgirl who had to fight a dinosaur, right? And then I play this card oh. on you and make you turn into a steamy romance. Okay. okay. So it has so. a little. That's the cool. I like that All aspect right. of the game. Yeah. For sure. Or like the, the now the movie's being taken over by zombies and it just totally you have a love story like character and it just derails you the it entire throws, time. It happens a lot. So I like the I like the way it makes me think on the fly. So it that's this is I like this game for a party cool. and it plays up to like you can play as many as you want probably I think it's recommended. I gotta 10. take a look at that. Yeah. You're up next. Um, uh, my number three is... She's looking at her notes. Coo. 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 There is oh, an oldie, oldie but goodie. Oldie but goodie. Oh my god, this game... Talk about surviving the the shelf. I mean, I I get rid of games like really quickly, but this game is just... It's perfect for newcomers. It's perfect for uh, gamers who... I played for. this last week. Right, it's so good. I mean, it's so easy to teach, and if... Your whoever it is you're giving it to already has cool. You can get some of the expansions and change it up a bit. It's just a great game. Two to six players, uh, less than 
15. It's good for a stocking stuff. It's super small. Yeah. But if you want, and if you like this game and you enjoy it more, the person that you get it for, they can actually get the large coup. Like, mm -hmm. Not even the expansion. There's an entire new oh, one a big that's one. big. Yeah. And that's, that's a cool option as well. But yeah. this right there, I haven't taken that one out again after playing it three or four times. This one I keep pulling out. Because it's yeah. super easy to pull out. You want to and it's your... so quick. Like, you know, it's like one of those games where you're like, okay, game night. At the end of the night, some people left. You're like, okay, you know, let's play one more. Yeah. Quick, Everybody right. knows it. And, you know, it's just great. Uh, do you have a go-to bluff? Oh, it's it's the... The Duke. Duke. It's the Duke. The Duke. Duke. It's always <laughs> the Duke. <laughs> Any three votes for the Duke? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next, too. next would be to draw. You two, just take uh, draw money. a new card from the deck. <laughs> Everybody's a Duke in the beginning. <laughs> All right. I got uh, a new one actually by Sphere Games. This one's called Mini Diversity or Mini Diversity, however you want to read it. It's by Maxime Tardif and uh, it's by Sphere Games. Uh, this has come from my French Canadian buddies up there, up north, and it is one to seven players. It takes about. I guess 25 minutes would be right. One to seven. Yeah, one to seven players. You're trying to save the reef from extinction. You're going to have actually a weighing scale where it's going to go from green to red. And if it goes past red, the species goes extinct. If it goes past green, the species is safe. You have the evil corporation. You have islands. They're trying to turn the, the corporation's trying to turn the islands into cities, trying to turn the reef into extinct animal life. If they extinct a certain amount of animals before you save a certain amount, they win. You can play on different difficulties. Uh, it has a feel of a forbidden island, okay. as well as the forbidden um, desert. It has that little bit of a feel there, but it's a co -op. Co -op. but it's a cooperative game. But there's no um, there's no single player that can speak in the game. So you you don't get to see the cards in your hand. Everybody else does. But on your turn, you play a card from your hand, and that can help save an animal. Or you can choose to discard a card from your hand in order to save an island. Or you can instead use your turn to not do anything but tell your opponents, one of your uh, sorry, one of your allies, what cards in their hand. But there's no alpha gamer. There can't be because no one can speak. The best thing you can do is tell somebody what's in their hand. So they don't know what they have in their hand. You know what everybody else has, but you don't know what you have. So and it's like Hanabi. It has, yeah, it has a feel of yeah. that as well. Okay. Um, surprisingly, uh, I don't, uh, generally, depending on the co-op games, I can get kind of annoyed due to the fact that there's an alpha gamer. This one re re removes that completely. Still adds a strategy. Still adds the availability to to help players when they need helping. But if they feel like they're doing well, you don't actually need to go in and okay. jump on their, their boat. But to help them, it'll cost you your entire turn. So is it yeah. going to be worth it for you? Mm. Um, but, oh, I played this. We played this many, many, many times. We played this on a live stream. We played this previously two or three times before. And for some reason, we keep coming back to it. Uh, Mini Diversity. It's by Sphere Games. Definitely check out one to seven players. It's super small. It has a co-op. So uh, there's that for you. I really enjoyed the game, though. Cool. Excellent. Roll for seven. It's also uh, not very known. Pick another one. Five. Three. One's terrible. Ooh. Oh, you got it. Ooh, I'm going to go last. So, okay. Michael, you can go first. All right, I'm jumping back in here. Um, gosh, I'm going to toss up between the two last games here. Uh, I'm going to go with this one, I think. I'm going to pick the la that one for the last. This is called Night Clan. And it's by Gamephilia, I believe. Yes, Gamephilia. Hmm. Uh, this one plays two to four players. It's about 15 minutes of play, and it's for ages 14 and up. In the game Night Clan, you're going to be playing cards face down on locations. The artwork is Super cool. I dig the artwork. Mm. Uh, but what's going to end up happening is as you're playing cards face down on locations, a couple, a couple of them we've been playing them face up. This actually just came out from Kickstarter maybe about a week ago. Um, you're going to be trying to mess with your opponents so that way you'll have the most stuff, the most points in an area. And, uh, and also playing certain cards to make sure that you remove their cards from an area so they don't get those points. And the game's going to come with some really, really gorgeous looking artwork. Um, you're going to be utilizing different things, and each player is going to have their own set of cards. You're going to be utilizing daughters. Um, there's, not, there's trolls. There's mistletoe that removes the trolls. The trolls mess with the daughters, uh, so on and so forth. There's also the night clan guy. And you can also gain riches, which can give you bonus points as well in the game. But it's a nice little, like, area control game with a little bit of hidden bluffing. No one's really talking, which is nice sometimes. And it's also really small, and it's only, like, probably, like, 60 cards in the game. It does very well. Uh, nice, nice little game. One of Grant's favorite games, my cameraman, one of his favorite games. He went ahead and backed this on Kickstarter. That's why I actually have this copy of the game. Very, very impressed with Night Clan. Well done, guys. A nice hidden little gem. So. Did you just pick two games in a row that people are not supposed to talk? Um. <laughs> yes, this one is a competitive. <laughs> this one's competitive, and the other one is cooperative. So you like people to be quiet on 
with the smaller life. games when it's quick. <laughs> with, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, for some reason, these, I mean, th these are niche games. They're smaller. A lot of people don't know about them. Mm. And I think they deserve a voice, even yeah. though they don't have one. You get it? They don't have one because no one can talk. Ah, dad joke! <laughs> Okay, Night Clan by <laughs> Game Feel. You gotta get your pile up here too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, Night all right, Clan. my turn. Yeah, yeah, my okay. mini diversity. Um, when I was thinking about my top two, mm -hmm. I was thinking about what we played in the house the most. Mm -hmm. So um, another funny. So I have AEG Cat Lady by Josh Wood. Yeah. So, um, oh, that's cute. I actually ran an event for that's Josh really Wood. Cute. We actually did a release party. Yeah. I didn't play game. it. This game. Well, this is one of the games. That we did. I didn't even try it. I you were out of town that weekend. Mm. But we did. It was Catterday. It's really cute. Oh, okay. It was Catterday. So I met Josh Wood. I actually didn't play it until and I took it home. I didn't have to play it at the event. I finally took it home and played it and realized how much I love it. And there's actually an app now out now on mm -hmm. your your cell phone. But it's a it's um uh, it's a set collection kind of drafting game. So you have like a yeah. uh three by three grid where you're collecting cats and costumes and you have to take food. Care of them. You gotta take care of taking in strays and then um, points at the end. Um yeah, I, this is we play this all the time in the house. So um, comes with little a, a little cat meeple, um, the food tokens, victory points. The designer is the artist. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that was a funny story. They were like, uh, John uh, John Zisner, uh, Zisner was like, told Josh was like, oh, um, we can get an artist, or we can just use the art you're using. Yeah. You could pay you more. And he's like, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Josh is a really cool guy. Uh, heard the apps really successful. I played it a few times. I love this game. We play it all the time. It sits in front of the TV. So this is one of the two I games. I have to try it sometime. He, did he do the other cat game too? Uh, no, no. That's Al Gonzalez. That's I think you're talking. This is You're thinking this is of Josh's. Uh, Cat Rescue? No, actually. Cantankerous There's cats. so many cat games. Cats. You sneaky Al internet Gonzalez. peoples. I know you yeah. like those cat games. Mm -hmm. Cool. That was my buddy. Uh, I'm a sucker. All right. <laughs> My number two. One born every minute. Is uh, either the exit series or the unlock series. We don't have. I didn't bring unlock here, so we are showing the exit. But basically, the escape room game. So these are really cheap. These are usually like less than 10 15. Bucks. Yeah. 15 bucks. Oh, okay. uh, the exit series, you can You have to destroy the game after your play. You have to play it. But the unlock series, you don't have to. So. I personally prefer unlock because that way I can pass it on. But exit and they have different mechanics. So exit has a little bit more variety to it. So depending on what you like, get both. There's get, tons of these games. Yeah, yeah. There's so many. So I try them both them yet, and see though. which one you like. I, I mean, I like escape games. I did the escape room, the game, and I did the Sherlock Holmes game. Both are pretty fun. These are smaller ones. I wonder, are they are yeah. they an hour, two hours? Like that? Uh, you are supposed to do it under an hour. If you do oh, really? that, you're great. If not, then you are a little bit. You less lose by the game again. <laughs> no, you don't lose. You're supposed to like just solve it, and then and they give you clues. If you get stuck, you can Look at go the to clues. clues, or you can use the app, depending. Uh, this can be played by one person, uh, like this is one to four, but usually like you can play with a bunch of people if you want, but I think one person or two people would be great. So again, something that can be played by one person, which is an option that we don't have here. So it's a good solo game, but also good for two or more people. And they have different difficulties for all the different games. Yes, oh. exactly. So this yeah. is a medium so, and this is in a very... Exit, this is around the front. Yeah, That's exit cool. the game or unlock. Great. I think Last we're down to number one. one. One more chance. Here we no. go. Come here? on. Oh, I think I got it this time. Oh. Can you say number I one? I do. Number one. That's how I roll. <laughs> All right. It is. It is how That's you how roll. That's how I roll. All right. So I guess I will save the best for last and allow Jackie to go last. What is Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and go first. I'm going to go first. Why not? Usually it's always me going last when I win, so I'm going to change it up this time. 10 Minute Heist this is by Daily Magic Games, and it is good. Oh. This game is where you're, you're basically going to shuffle all these cards, these tile cards out, flip them all up, make this big tower, starting at the top of the tower, climbing all the way down, scoring as much loot as you possibly can, and escaping whoever has the most loot at the end is the winner. Of course, with the hidden aspect, uh, well, not the hidden aspect, but the additional aspect of when you go to a space that's on this top tower floor, you can choose to take any of these items, or you can go down to anyone down here. Whenever you go down here, you can never come back up, though. 
So eventually, as you go down this thing, you're starting to take things. The more players, the more things get taken. And if you choose to get left behind up top because you were, you're too greedy, you'll lose all the good stuff at the very bottom or in the middle. So you have to try and determine how far you want to go down before you get that really good piece. And also, you're going to have hidden objectives, like you're going to need certain colors more than others, and those are going to score you more bonus points. If you leave the tower early before everybody else, you're going to get bonus points as well. And uh, there's also a second place and a third place for multiple players. It plays, I think, up to four players players uh, if i'm correct it does two to five wow five, even okay. better um and it's about 10 to 15 minutes it really is and it has an advanced version and there's some extra exclusive stuff coming in the box this has a lot of replayability it's really quick really easy to play everybody i played this game has enjoyed it profusely so an excellent job this is definitely a stocking stuff i would recommend for you the guys that are moderate moderate to advanced gamers there's a lot of game in here for what is shown so yeah I don't know if you guys have played it or not, but... I have not. No. Ten minute heist. So you sold it to fun. me. I want it. Yeah. It's a very good. Very good game. <laughs> I go? You go. Number right. one. Here I'm we go. Staying with the cat theme. You the would. one that's played in the house the most. Sparkle Kitty. Oh, Sparkle Kenny's Kitty. Game. I actually have the new box, too. The new box, if you go to the stores, is Fancy. a little bit bigger. Fancier. More artwork. Uh, his daughter's on the side. Um, the, uh Princess Violet. Um, but yeah, Manny Vega, Breaking Games, Peter Vaughn. Um... This, be a princess. this game is well used in my house. Um, if so, you are if you play this game. <laughs> so the their slogan is, no one puts princess in the tower. Uh -huh. So uh, you pick a princess, and uh, you're, you're saying sugar and spice spells to release this princess out of her tower. So the reason I love this game, and it's the other, out of the two cat games that sits in front of the television, this one gets played the most because we can play it with... I played it with my five-year-old niece, and we've taken some of the, the take that cards out, and we just play it for the shapes and colors oh. and the wording, and it helps her like learn words and the, the colors and the shapes to just matching, kind of like a little Uno feel. Little then, gamer gal's best friend this game. Yeah. Yeah. And my wife, apparently, too. She loves the damn thing. <laughs> exactly. And then we play adults, and they have that specific rule. If you curse or you miss, if you mispronounce the sugar and spice, then you got to add to your tower. So there's a lot more take that. When you're playing with a group, I think it's what one to six. One. It's to always seven? funny when you got big Three hairy guys like us playing yeah. princess, princess, and so, sparkle palette princess, and yeah. so three. Yeah, to eight. you had to basically verbalize the word every time you play something. Yeah, it comes. With, yeah. It's real simple. It comes with one spell book, yeah. and then a bunch, just a bunch of uh, sugar spice spells, and then some player cards. So yeah, super cool. Really and uh, secretly, there's gonna be another one releasing pretty pretty soon mm -hmm. here. So keep there'll be a release that. party for that coming too. Yep. So. The third one, right? Ooh. Here's Princess Violet. This is Manny's daughter. Yeah. So it's a awesome. it's a really great card game with some really great art. I yep. agree. Yeah. So. My number one is you guys probably already have it. Sushi Go. Sushi Go. Sushi Go is great, and right now it is less than ten bucks. Can you Sushi Go it? or Sushi Go Party? If you had to recommend one. Well, this, stocking this stuffer. This fits in the stocking. Yes. Party does not. But if you, the two, size of like so. if you had to choose between the two, though, which one would you go I for? I have both. <laughs> I don't have party, actually. If I have to choose between the two, if you don't have... A uh, if your stocking you is very big. If you don't have one, if your stocking is very really big, you, you get the party. Okay. Because it has more, uh, you know... Options. Options, and you have more courses. You have more mm -hmm. food you can serve. But uh, for... Just casual gamers, uh, someone who's new to gaming who does not already have Sushi Go. This is probably the cheapest out of everything. Yes. And this has uh, drafting, it's two to five players, and you're quick trying and easy. to make sushi, and everybody's involved. It's intense and it's quick, so Sushi Go. Let's save room for dessert. Right. Good, good <laughs> choices. Pudding! Uh, if I had to recommend these lists, I think uh, for the more beginner gamer, this would probably be the best list to go yes. for. For all of her games are games that uh, anybody can play almost instantaneously. Uh, you've got the basic escape room games, which is a yeah. big crazy thing going on that everybody loves right now. Koo has always been a classic, very easy. Sushi Go and Funky Chicken are yeah. great party and kid games. Um, and, and I then, chose everything. Everything has to be under 20. Yeah, that's why I, I think all of my games are under twenty as well. I'm almost positive, in fact. Maybe, no, yeah, this is under twenty. All of them. This might be. No, this and, is twenty. And this one I hear his game like by medium gamer, medium to light gamer as well. All good choices. My games are probably more a little more on the advanced side. This one's gonna be a little bit more easy to understand. These 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 ones here are more advanced. And then this one is is a beginner game, but it's it's hidden. It's something that you know, you'll see a lot of. So I don't, it's I don't new. Know. It's so, new. So a gamer might not have that. So maybe you guys want to see some niche games, maybe go ahead and check out these guys here. But overall, really good list. I actually don't have a lot of uh, 
disagreements on your guys' list. I think you guys made some good choices. This would be a really great game collection overall for somebody to have for micro games. Um, thank you guys for watching. You guys want to go ahead and plug it in? Thank you guys. And thank you guys for wearing the shirt. That's right. Today. It's reflex. That's how yeah. we do it. Oh, so Show good. me how to win. Mm. My channel is on YouTube and we focus on strategy. <laughs> Strategy okay, based. I can't shake the, the that's not that's not working. Shaking the text. We interview working. designers and we ask them how to win at their game or expert gamers and uh, we have some playthroughs where we showcase games that allow several different strategies and see which one comes up on top. So awesome. check out show me how to win if you'd like to win. <laughs> Beautiful. Last hey. one here. Oh, and uh, so I'm John from Tabletop Takeovers. Uh, you can find us at uh, at Tabletop Takeovers on Instagram or Facebook or TT Takeovers uh, at on on Twitter, um, and if you're in Orange County, come check out one of our events. So we're always our live streams are uh, every other Tuesday as well. All right, guys. Well, you know who I am: Unfiltered Gamer, UnfilteredGamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, ticks, lists, and more. As well as checking out our website, um, as well as checking out our YouTube. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. It does help. We do greatly appreciate it. Our live streams are every Wednesday, 7 p.m., 7:30 p.m. PST. Every Wednesday, we're doing one right after this stream, actually. But this will be up tomorrow, which will probably be Thursday or Friday. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And happy holidays! <laughs> ho ho ho! It looks the prettiest. Uh, you, yeah, John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to suck the rolls in. We got our, we got our show me how to wins. Oh, you're just stretching out already. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, that, I'm making it nice. You, next time you wear this, you're gonna throw it in the dryer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it once you, once, once you take it off. I'm gonna be wearing it. A little nightgown. I'm wearing it tonight, so I can remember you. <gasps>